My mother used to sing a special song when I was growing up that always made me feel thankful and peaceful every time I heard it. That song went like this. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Goodness, you are a good looking group of people. And I am happy to be with you here tonight. My name is Alberta May Hill Gooch Henry. A name about as long as I am tall, but a name carries with it a person's history. So my purpose here tonight is to share with you a small part of my history with the hope that some of my story can add to your own. My parents were James and Julia Hill. They worked as sharecroppers near Shreveport, Louisiana, where I was born in 1920, October 14th, the youngest of four. We moved to Topeka, Kansas when I was three years old, after the landowners tried to cheat my parents out of their hard-earned money. Now, because my mother had the tendency to speak her mind, Kansas was viewed as a place where the likelihood of a black woman both speaking out and staying alive were greatly increased. My brother David said that I was much like my mother, even as a child, aggressive, authoritative, and usually right. <laughs> so Topeka was a wise move for both mother's sake and for mine. I attended a segregated elementary school, moved on to middle school, and started working shortly after graduating from high school. I was working in a theater there in Topeka when I met my first husband, Gooch. We married in 1941, and I became Alberta May Hill Gooch. Mother didn't care much for him, though. She said, you are old enough, so I'm not going to tell you no, but you are playing with God here. You make your bed hard, you have to lie in it. And like my brother said, mother was right as usual. A few years into the marriage, my health began to fail me, and unfortunately, my marriage began to fail as well. Anyway, back to my health. <sighs> One day, it was in 1948, my mother came over and found me collapsed on the floor. My appendix had burst and nearly ended my life as I knew it up to that point. But while I was so sick, almost unable to move, I had an experience I will never forget. I saw a white light come into the room and sit at the end of my bed. And then I heard a voice say, you will not die. I have a work for you to do. Well, it took several months before I realized what that work was. And I was just too, too weak to even think about it. And because it was taking so long for me to get my strength back, 
the doctors decided I needed to relocate to a place where I could rest and recover more fully. That's where Salt Lake City came into the picture. I tried. Believe me, I really tried. But in my weakened condition, I couldn't think of any other place to go. <laughs> so, in August of 1949, I arrived. Salt Lake wasn't bad. In fact, it was a rather nice place to visit. <laughs> At least that's what I kept telling myself. It was just so different. <laughs> yeah. So many things kept reminding me that I wasn't in Kansas anymore. <laughs> and no, ma no matter how many times I wished that I could click my heels to go home, I couldn't bring myself to leave. And one day, I was standing at the sink, washing dishes, looking out the window to the east at the beautiful mountains, wondering what mission the Lord had for me when he promised me that I wouldn't die. Then suddenly, while I was looking at those mountains, I realized what it was. And with great disbelief, I said, Oh, no, Lord, <laughs> not Utah. <laughs> but Utah, it was. And it is where I stayed for the rest of my days. Now, realizing I had a mission to do in Utah was one thing. But discovering what that work was exactly was a completely different story altogether. Finding housing, and a job was difficult because most businesses wouldn't sell to coloreds, let alone hire them. I heard so many oppressive no's and so many more um, judgmental glares, but I was all right because I was blessed to have the Baptist church community at the center of my life. And singing Negro spirituals helped to carry me along Songs like, I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water. I will not be moved. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. The only positions open to colored women was in domestic service. Now, some people thought domestic work was demeaning, but my mother always said, anything that's honest is not beneath you. You do the best job you can as long as it's honest. So I worked in domestic service for a while and did the best job I could. I managed to keep myself busy and found many ways to get involved while having my secular outlets as well. A group of us would get together and we'd play dominoes and checkers and I knew my way around the deck when it came to card playing. One night, while I was enjoying a much needed outlet of game playing, I managed to meet Harold Lord Henry, a man I recognized the Lord had picked out for me, but I still said, Lord, I'm not having it. <laughs> but that man would not stop coming around. And the more he came around, the more I grew to like his beautiful green eyes. Mm. And I soon realized he was a lovely person. In November 17th, 1950, we married and I became Alberta Mayhill Gooch Henry. 
We were married for 46 years until Harold died in 1996. But you know, sometimes when I would close my eyes, I could still see Harold's lovely face and his beautiful green eyes looking back into mine. Harold's two sons and the two children we adopted caused me to get involved with the schools. Yeah. Serving on several boards and committees. Now being involved meant that I got to see and learn a great deal. You know, I gained insights into the lives of the minorities in the area and I was troubled. And one of the problems that troubled me to, the most was the number of young black students that were dropping out of school. A few, if any, went to college and most of them never graduated. Now I ask you, without a proper education, what future opportunities did those black students have? Compared to whites, not enough. Not enough. My heart ached for those students. And I said, Lord, I'm not having it. Something's got to be done. I ain't going to let nobody turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. I ain't going to let nobody turn me round. I'm going to keep on walking. Keep on talking and marching up to freedom land. Well, I went to work. I brought together a group of people with money from one place and put them together with a group of people with money from another place. And before long, I had created a scholarship program to help those black students get their education. Then, in 1965, the Alberta Henry Education Foundation was officially organized. And I am proud to say that we never use federal tax dollars for funding. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, now the, the NAACP was another organization I was involved with. Then there was a Head Start program and the Education Task Force, where I was chairperson for a time, and that kept me busy. One day, I got a phone call. Ring, ring. <laughs> Hello? Hmm. It was from the parents of some junior high school students who felt that a principal had just suspended their children unfairly. All right. All right. Bye. Well, I was preparing to go to battle with that principal when I got another phone call. Ring, ring. Hello. Yes. Oh. This one was from the regents of the University of Utah asking if I would accept an honorary doctorate degree. What? Well, oh, all right. Um, but at the moment, I'm preparing to go burn down a particular junior high school. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye bye. He said that it was fine if I wanted to do that, but if I could give him my approval to accept an honorary doctorate degree, do that first, then go burn the school down. <laughs> well, I gave him my approval, although I must admit, I wasn't altogether certain what an honorary doctorate meant. But after it was explained to me, I accepted. And it's my privilege to say that I became an honorary doctorate of humane letters in June of 1971. And that junior high school, is still standing. <laughs> Eleven years later, 
I graduated with a bachelor's degree in education at the spry, mature age of 60. You see, I wanted to show the students that I knew their problems, but if I could do it, so could they. And I wanted to teach them that in order to do something worthwhile, to really want to do something of significance with your life is the most important thing there is. Yes, I was the president of the NAACP for 12 years. Yes, I was the first black elected to the Utah Women's Hall of Fame. Yes, I fought campaigns for civil rights, winning some and losing others. Although I strongly believe everyone, black and white alike, should be dedicated. And yes, I am grateful that there was an organization called the Alberta Henry Education Foundation that helped minorities and disadvantaged youth. But all the while, I thought of myself as a little black woman just doing what she could to help people out and to do what the Lord wanted me to do. And I believe a part of my destiny was to take up residence in Salt Lake City, Utah, to do what I could to guarantee the equality of educational opportunities for all people, because fairness works every kind of way. I'm grateful that the Lord blessed my body to sustain me throughout my life to do my work until cancer took a hold of me in 2003. On May 12th, 2005, that battle ended. And that's the day I left this earth to go to rest with my Lord and to see my family again and to see my lovely Harold. Whew, that was a happy day, hallelujah. Whew. Well, that's enough of the history of Alberta May Hill Gooch Henry. <laughs> My purpose here is done. I'm gone. But you are here now. But before I go, I want you to know that looking out at all of you, at your beautiful faces, watching the good that you are doing and that you are being prepared to do, and believing in the history that you are making, well, it does my, does my heart such good and gives me cause to rejoice. So in honor of you, I'd like to end the way I began. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches. I know he watches. I know he watches. Me. Thank you. God bless you.